everyone. I thought I'd share with you a little bit about some of the drones that we see commonly out there, what they're used for, and a little bit about their goods and bads. So we've got a range of different options here on the table. Now with the exception of the big one at the back here, everything that you see is in what we call the sub two kilo range, which means that you don't need a license to fly these at this stage in Australia. Now, so that means that it's not necessarily the size because as you can see, this drone is actually quite large, but it's really all about the weight. And this drone manages to get so large because it's made out of styrofoam, so it's incredibly lightweight as a fixed wing there. So most commonly what we see people flying are these rotary drones, so flying like a helicopter, they've got the propellers, as opposed to the fixed wing. Now the fixed wing is really good for long distance flight. It's really efficient, just like an aeroplane, but the challenge is it needs a large area to take off and land. These smaller drones are always really good for taking off and landing in small spaces, and they can also just hover. They don't need to be in continual motion. Now, even in the sub two kilo category, we do have quite a range of different options. Now, I guess the, the Phantom is probably one that most people see around. So it comes in just under two kilograms and it has a camera on it already. So that's already there and that's on a gimbal. So the gimbal means that the camera will move in the direction that you want it to and will be stable regardless of the way the aircraft is flying around the place. Now a similar size is the 3DR Solo. Now this is one that I do actually fly quite a lot even though it's now discontinued unfortunately. But one of the things that I like about this particular one is that you can change out the different camera systems that you have on it. And I have one here, it looks like a GoPro, but it's actually a multi-spectral camera that flies on that, so that's kind of cool. Now stepping down from the Phantom, also in the DJI range, is the Mavic. Now this one's quite neat because it's foldable, so it looks a lot smaller when it's folded up, and then expands quite a bit as well. Now these ones then also have the foldable propellers, so that keeps them nice and compact still with a camera and the gimbal on the front. Then we move to the, the much, much smaller drones. So in the same range, you'll see the Spark. So this is really quite small and it's only just larger than the palm of your hand there. Still has a camera, very, very small gimbal on that. And the camera quality isn't as good as what you would see on any of the other larger ones as well. Now then you're really getting into the toy drone arena. And so I've got three different examples here. So we have the Parrot Mambo, the Rise Tello, and we've got a Blade, which is like a tiny loop here. All right, so let's actually start with this smallest one. So we see these around a lot. Um, they're actually not as cheap as what you might think they would be for something this size. And they are incredibly difficult to fly. The difference between this one and either the Tello or the Mambo is that these two drones actually have sensors on them that help them stabilize in flight. And so that's not on these ones at all, but if you can fly these, then that makes you a really, really good pilot. So you actually can turn off the stabilizing sensors from the Tello and the Mambo if you choose and you, and you fly them without those and it is a lot more challenging, but it really builds up your flight skills. The Tello and the Mambo, not a huge amount different between the two, just different competing brands really. They've all got really small propellers and the propellers can be removed if they're, if they're broken or chipped or anything like that at all. The Tello has a camera on the front, the Mambo has it underneath, but you can also get an attachment to pop that on the top as well. So basically every single drone here, with the exception of the little tiny Whoop, all of these ones have the ability to take photos, which is really, really important for the type of work that I do, which is mapping. Now the one up the back there is a five kilogram drone. The reason it's so much larger is because it carries a considerably larger camera. I often put a digital SLR camera on that for really, really good aerial photos. It has much bigger propellers, so of course there's a much greater danger if something goes wrong there. So when we look at consequence of something going wrong, the bigger drones are always going to be much more of a challenge. Thanks very much for listening in. I hope to see you for our next micro learning episode.